Well, hello, Michael here, and today we're looking at Job chapter 31, and we're going to look at verse 1 to 15, and start with a commentary by Matthew Henry, um, where Job, Job declares his uprightness and his integrity. And so, in regards to verse 1 to 8, it reads, Job did not speak the things here recorded by way of boasting, but in answer to the charge of hypocrisy. He understood the spiritual nature of God's commandments as reaching to the thoughts and intents of the heart. It is best to let our actions speak for us, but in some cases we owe it to ourselves and to the cause of God, solemnly to protest or innocence of the crimes which were falsely accused. The lust of the flesh and the love of the world are two fatal rocks on which multitudes split. Against these Job protests he was always careful to stand upon his guard. And God takes more exact notice of us than we do of ourselves. Let us therefore walk circumspectly. He carefully avoided all sinful means of getting wealth. He dreaded all forbidden profit as much as all forbidden pleasures. What we have in the world may be used with comfort or lost with comfort if honestly gotten. Without strict honesty and faithfulness in all our dealings, we can have no good evidence of true godliness. Yet how many professors are unable to abide this touchstone? Let's read the actual verses then. Um, start at verse 1. I made a covenant with mine eyes. Why then should I think upon a maid? For what portion of God is there from above? And what inheritance of the Almighty from on high? Is not destruction to the wicked and strange punishment to the workers of iniquity? Doth not he seize my ways and count all my steps? If I have walked with vanity, or if my foot has hasted to deceit, let me wait in an even balance that God may know mine integrity. If my step has turned out the way and my heart walked after mine eyes, and if any blot hath cleaved to mine hands, then let me sow and let another eat. Yea, let my offspring be rooted out. If mine heart have been deceived by a woman, or if I have laid wait at my neighbor's door, then let my wife grind upon another, and let others bow down upon her. For this is a heinous crime, yea, it is an iniquity to be punished by the judges. For it is a fire that consumeth to destruction, and root out, and would root out all mine increase if I did despise the cause of my manservant or my maidservant when they contended with me. What then shall I do when God rises up and when he visiteth? What shall I answer him? Did not he that hath made me in the womb make him? And did not one fashion us in the womb? So the other commentary from Matthew Henry in regards to verse 9 to 15, reads, All the defilements of the life comes from a deceived heart. Lust is a fire in the soul. Those that indulge it are said to burn. It consumes all that is good there and lays the conscience waste. It kindles the fire of God's wrath, which, if not quenched by the blood of Christ, will consume even to eternal destruction. It consumes the body, it consumes the substance. Burning lusts bring burning judgments. Job had a numerous household, and he managed it well. He considered that he had a master in heaven. And, as we are undone, if God should be severe with us, we ought to be mild and gentle towards all with whom we have to do. Yeah. <laughs> So specific in these verses really challenges us as men. And it's to see how Job, you know, 
contended with these pitfalls. Well, Michael here, trusting that you enjoyed reading of half of uh, Job 31 and look forward to completing it as we go forward. Until then, let's declare again, Jesus is Lord!